Yo, what's up? My name's Petrowski. Welcome back to Season 3, Episode 8 of Road to Pokemo, The Journey to 10 Million Pokemon. All right, we have a lot of stuff to do today, a lot of money to make, and it's going to take a lot of time, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. First things first, I want to go ahead and head over to the GTL and actually collect the Slowbro that we flipped. If you remember, last episode we bought this Slowbro for 15k and we were able to sell it for 90k, so a really nice flip on a quick little snipe there. Absolutely love to see it. We still have two Pokemon selling here on the GTL, but that puts us up to 130k Pokemon. Now, if you've noticed my party, my Pokemon inventory, you've noticed that I'm actually preparing to do a gym run. So I have everything set up. I'm probably going to be showing you guys the details of the gym run in this first episode. But after this, I'll essentially just be saying, hey guys, I'm going to go do a gym run and you'll understand what I mean. But this is the first gym run of season three, which will be a fun time. Uh, I essentially start it. If you see my guide, I have a, I have a guide now. I'll have an in-depth guide out by the time this video comes out. I start by setting my spawn location over here, which actually won't even matter in this run specifically, because usually I'll have a teleport mon on me to be able to teleport back to that place. But with this team and with this setup, I won't have access to a teleport mon, unfortunately, because I'm going to be making sure I level the Pokemon that I need to and get that XP on these Pokemon during the gym run. So getting a little bit of extra, extra XP on a Pokemon is a great way to use that because otherwise the XP would just be wasted anyway. Uh, I'm not really gaining levels on my Typhlosion since they're level 100, so I can divert that XP over to Pokemon that actually need it and then sell them uh, and make a little bit extra profit. So I have those three Pokemon, that Muck, Quillfish, and one other Pokemon I believe that I want to get to level 50. These are some mediocre comps that we made last, last episode. I would love to potentially make more mediocre comps, but I want to make sure I mix up all the different money making methods and there will always be different things to mention different money making methods in each episode but i'm gonna go ahead and i did buy one amulet coin if i believe looks like i forgot to so i'll go pick that up really quick all right i picked up the amulet coins so i'm gonna go ahead and pop that now amulet coins or riches charms are really important and really good to use during gym runs i'm obviously not going to be able to do a full gym run since i only have two regions completed but i essentially just want to do as many as possible uh, whether you use an amulet coin or a riches charms really comes down to how many gyms you can do within an hour in your route uh, and it really comes down to basic math you kind of have to run that math for yourself unfortunately there's no easy calculator but i'm gonna go ahead and pop the amulet coin and just start the first run if you know the general strategy uh pretty much most people do if you, if you watch my channel you've probably seen it before set up prankster tailwind with cottony set up drought uh and have explosion with torkoal to set up sun bring in double typhlosions and just absolutely go to work if something has flash fire that's the only issue you can actually really encounter uh if something has flash fire then usually you can bring in uh so like a surf uh dragonite like you see here to clean it up most of the time but i'll show you guys the first battle really quick and then i'll just spam through as many gyms as i can Gym runs will definitely be an integral part to this series. Just adding a ton of pure Poke Yen to your cash stack and to your capital is super, super important. It will definitely not be the only thing. We'll be experimenting with just so many methods. 10 mil is a lot of money. Like 10 mil is so much Poke Yen. So there's just going to be, I'm really excited to see how many things we can do, how many things we can test, loot from one hours, et cetera, et cetera, that will come from this series. It should be a really fun time. And I'm really excited to finally start making some Poke Yen. All right, here's the first gym leader defeated. Let me show you guys. You get 13k, around 13k Pokeyen per defeated gym leader when using the amulet coin. I did buy the amulet coin for 14k, so you do have to factor that into whether it's worth it or not. But usually with amulet coin, I believe you only have to do around five gym leaders, very, very few, before it becomes overwhelmingly worth to go ahead and. Uh, to use it to earn some extra pokey in i'm really curious i don't know i haven't calculated how many trainers i'm going to be able to do within this run that'll be a really interesting thing to get a hold of and really get an accurate number on hey man like every time i do a gym, a gym understanding how much pokey in you make per per gym run of your route is really really important this is also a super exciting time for this account because this is going to be the perfect season to actually play this account at least a little bit with the upcoming event season. If you don't know what event season is, it's essentially a uh, Halloween event, the Christmas event, and the Lunar New Year event because they're all very, very close together. I, ca I call it event season. I kind of coined the term because it's so many events back to back to back with like a three or four month period that it's really tough to build up capital in between the events to actually be able to, to uh, invest in them and participate. But that'll be... Like, since it's going to be such a long-term channel and long-term, I guess, season and journey to get that 10 million Pokemon, making investments and working alongside that event season is super, super prevalent. And I wouldn't have wanted to abuse event season or use event season to make Pokemon during the first season of this challenge, during the road to 1 million Pokemon, because that was like a very, you know, basic, I guess, you know, 1 mil is a very different thing from 10 mil, obviously, right? But with 10 mil... 
you're probably playing the game longer. Your accounts probably progressed more. And if you're making, if you're on, if you're trying to get 10 million Poke in, you're probably going to play an event or two. You've probably played the game long enough where you're going to end up playing an event or two. And I think that'll be a really cool, like real representation of how much Poke in can you make during events. And I'll warn you guys, it's a lot. You can make a ton of Poke in during events. Um, one of the most that I've ever made is that during the first hour, the first couple hours of an event are the most important by far. The first hour during the last 10 year anniversary event, which was a very special event to be fair, Within the first hour, one hour, I made around 1.6 million Poke in, which is just disgusting. Now, that falls off really hard. I went from earning like 1.6 million Poke in, in the first hour to 1 million in the second hour to like three to 500k in the third hour. And then it slowly goes down and then it ends up averaging around two to 300k per hour, I think, uh, generally, but it kind of depends. But yeah, that was that was insane. You can really take advantage of those early hours because uh, people are willing to buy the loot crates and see what's inside them. People want to gamble uh, really quickly. I do have to keep an eye out for when this Muck hits level 50, which will be quite soon, and I'll have to make sure I switch him out for another Pokemon and make sure I get the max amount of experience possible. So this gym is fantastic because you can actually use your setup mons to take out the water gym and then head over to the grass type gym and just take them out with Typhlosion without even having to have your setup mons. So saving every little bit of time between PC heals and PC visits possible is super freaking relevant. So that's like where you skim a lot of your time off with gym runs. The less you have to heal, the more time you save and the more money you'll be able to make. All right, so Muck is actually at level 50 now and I still, I actually want to attempt the fire gym leader so usually i don't recommend doing the fire gym leader unless you have like blast choices or some way to actually properly deal with him although i'm gonna have a lot of extra time in this gym run is what i'm guessing um because i only have two regions i'm not i'm gonna have a lot of extra time i'm not gonna have like all these trainers to go to so honestly taking the time to try to defeat whichever gyms i possibly can um is really good even if he has flash fire mons in the back i should hopefully be able to bring in my dragonite and hopefully deal with him but we'll obviously see how that goes uh i'm gonna go ahead and switch my muck out with my seismitoad put the xp share on that i'm not going to waste time selling the muck quite yet i'll do that after the amulet point is done or after i've defeated all the gyms that i possibly can so heading back to the fire gym leader now make sure to put an xp share on him all right now i don't believe either of these pokemon have flash fire so this first these first two should be quite easy they both should just get obliterated by eruption even if one of them has a uh, focus sash or something it should be totally fine uh, I'm curious though, I mean, it depends on how many Pokemon he has and which Pokemon he has that have Flash Fire. That's what I need to be aware of. Uh, if I see Arcanine, I need to watch out to see whether it has Intimidate on the on the bring-in or whether... It, so this has Flash Fire. I'm pretty sure these actually both might have Flash Fire. Um, I'm going to double check their abilities in the Pokedex really quick. All right, so there's a really, really good chance that both of these actually have Flash Fire, which puts me in a really weird position because I want to essentially switch out my Typhlosions and go for Swift, at least on this one that has it. Um, the issue being this other one doesn't have Swift and the Chandelure is Ghost type. So I actually can't hit this Chandelure with essentially anything from my Typhlosions. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out this Typhlosion, I think, to Seismitoad and essentially... I think I'm sacrificing my seismic so I'm gonna miss out on a little bit of XP. Um, I have to switch them both out actually. I'm gonna switch them both out. I might just fail this gym, but I wanted to test it. And if I fail this gym, I can actually show you guys a strategy which I use all the time. Uh, if I enter a battle that cannot be won within a gym leader, that'll save you a lot of time. So we'll test that out. We're gonna bring both of them then, so I can bring in my other Typhlosion and bring it and start swifting. And I would love to start surfing on this Dragonite, but I'm really scared of the damage he's about to take. But I think this is like the only way I can beat this battle. So. We're going to do this. Thankfully, he didn't take much damage at all. We still have Tailwind active, I believe. I want to make sure I bring in the correct Typhlosion that has Swift, which I think is this one with 270 HP. Using your HP stats to find the correct Pokemon is really important. I'm going to Swift here. I'm going to Surf here. I could arguably Rain Dance and then Surf, and it might actually help the situation a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just go for this. The Surf's going to hit my Typhlosion, which is unfortunate, but... I'm really curious to see the surf damage here honestly doing way little compared to what i expected unfortunately 28 percent to chandelure hidden power comes out i think that's gonna kill my dragon it looks like this gym is gonna be unwinnable i guess he's still alive barely they both have power no yeah so now the gym's actually unwinnable because i just have no way to kill the chandelure so you know what i'm gonna go ahead and cut my losses and show you guys the strategy so what i'm actually gonna do since this gym is unwinnable now i'm not going to finish it because it's just gonna waste time i'm going to actually log out and i'll show you guys why 
So two things, when you're logged out, your amulet coin time actually won't be counting down. It'll just like stay still and stagnant. If you're not logged in, the counter won't count down. And secondly, you get this pop up when you log out. So your account is still logged in. Would you like to reconnect to this session? You're going to click no. You're going to click no if you want to do the strategy. What the strategy is going to do is it's going to disconnect you from the current battle, send you back to the PC, fully heal you and essentially give you a, a, it's a sort of debuff that you can't sweet send, but that's pretty much the only effect that matters for this. It's not going to hurt your gym run at all. So click no uh, and you'll be teleported and save a little bit of time it'll say the session was terminated by user you'll be sent back to the pc and it'll look something like this and now i'm going to go ahead and head on over to the next city all right here we are at the next gym in the run castelia city bug gym should be a pretty easy one all right there's castelia defeated onto nimbasa city i believe is next and don't worry, I won't be doing this in depth of a sort of overview of the gym run every time. Literally, I'm only going to do this for the first time to show you guys what the route should look like for this season. If you want to see a full in depth gym run guide, I do have one or two on my channel. By the, by the time this is up, the second and new updated one might be out. But if it's not, uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be a new updated one coming out with a double blast toy strategy involved and everything. But we're going to head over to Nimbasa City now. This one actually does have a flash fire chance, so we do need to be a little careful here. Here's what the gym leader looks like. You should be able to get to her after just riding that train one time. You'll always miss it coming in. I, I kind of hate you have to wait a full rotation for it to come back because you'll literally 100% of the time always miss this on the first rotation. It's just the way the game kind of, I guess, loops or the way the route works. All right, so as you can see, they actually did have the Flash Fire Nine Tails, which I don't know the actual percentage on it. I want to say it's around one out of three. I want to say one out of three times you end up encountering it. So in my experience, the best way to deal with the Nine Tails is not to immediately switch over to your Dragonite, but to essentially wait um, and let one of your dra let one of your Typhlosions go down and then safely bring in the Dragonite. All right, so there we go. One of my Typhlosions did get killed. The other is actually at full HP, which is kind of surprising, but it's honestly a really good position for me. So now I can keep eruptioning with this Typhlosion, and then it'll actually be faster. So I should be really safe to go ahead and eruption there, and Surf here should be pretty safe. Eruption takes care of Delcaddy super easily, and the only thing I need to worry about now is killing the Ninetales. So I'm really curious to see how much damage this does. Fire Blast does 68. I wonder if that's a crit. That's a lot of damage. Really surprised by that. I guess the flash fire boosting all the fire moves only doing 22%. It's pretty unfortunate. I'm not going to lie. That is super scary. Um, honestly, at this point, it might be better for me to switch out. Um, yeah, switch, switch my Typhlosion out so I can go ahead and um, go for a cut instead of just eruptioning into it. Um, it might be worth to also just go ahead and set up Rain Dance here. Even if my Dragonite goes down, I think the, the difference will be a little bit better. Unfortunately, this is going to be awkward. It's going to be able to do less damage to my Typhlosion. So, yeah, I'm going to let my Dragonite go down here. This might be an unwinnable battle, really sadly. This is a very, very, very budget gym rerun team, and we will be improving it for sure um, as the as, as the series goes on. So as the season goes on, once we get more capital, once we get more money, I definitely want to try to improve this because this is a tough position to be in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just try to bubble beam this thing uh, and then also try to cut it on here. 17% just doing no damage to this thing fire blast and take my seismic toad. Yeah, looking like a lost battle Unfortunately, maybe if I use like an X attack or something on my typhlosion, maybe it could have been winnable, but Looking pretty brutal here. No, he's actually out of fire blast. Oh, this is actually I think we win this Wow, that's actually really no. He has a full restore. Oh, that's so unfortunate I was gonna say that's super lucky like if he's I mean, he's still struggling even if I think this is actually winnable I think if I just like keep my guy alive and just heal, I should be fine. If he's actually struggling, I he dodged the cut, really. I think this is actually winnable. It's going to lose me a lot of time, but honestly, usually time is your most important resource in a Jimmy run. But if you don't have all the regions done, you get a lot more lax with it. You don't really need to worry about it too much. So even if he has a second full restore, there we go. That's a very, very tight battle, but we were able to take out that gym leader. That was actually, that was pretty cool. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, gym reruns really just make the cash stack quickly, quickly grow. Already up to 181k pure Pokey in. I'm going to head over to this gym and then do the Oplucid one, I believe, up here. Drift fail, then Oplucid, and then head over to Kanto. For those who don't know, even though I have six gym badges completed in the Hoenn region, I'm actually not able to do gym reruns there. To be able to rebattle and rerun gyms, you have to have defeated the entire region and beaten the Elite Four. So, unfortunately, I can't take advantage of that quite yet. 
All right, there we go. Drift Veil defeated super easily. A really self-explainable gem. You really just blast through it. I'm gonna head on over to Opelucid City, which Opelucid City is actually pretty tough and will be a little scary. It's one of those, what I call a damage checkpoint in the run where you really have to have enough damage. Your Typhlosions have to have high enough stats and nature to be able to blast through it usually, or their multi-scale Dragonites will cause issue. And I'm a little worried. Neither of my Typhlosions have the correct nature. I really need to upgrade these whenever possible. That'll be one of the first priorities within this run. And honestly, I might even be looking to buy new ones this episode, but I have to make some more Pokemon before I could do that. So let's go ahead and heal up uh, and head over to this gym and we'll just see how much damage we can do. We'll see if it's possible. Okay, I haven't seen the Dragonite yet, so that actually might be a really good sign if she doesn't happen to have it this time. We did run into one Flash Fire mod. Uh, Brock could also have a Flash Fire mod, so that's the other, I guess, fear coming up. Brock and Misty are the two most difficult gyms we have left because those will be a little awkward. Also, Blaine, if I try to attempt Blaine, which I think I might go ahead and tr at least try. Still have 31 minutes left in the gym run, which is quite a lot. Now, she has an Embor here, which I don't think has Flash Fire, so I should be fine. Yep, really easy Opposed City gym. Really good luck there. All right, Seismitoad just hit level 49, and that should be the last gym in Unova. So I'm actually going to head over to the docks in uh, Castellia City and head on over to Kanto. Also, I'm actually not going to heal in Unova before heading back because healing in Unova, as many people might know, is actually a little slower than most other regions. So I'm going to fly over to Kanto as soon as possible, uh, head over to Brock, do him first, I think. We'll do Blaine last since he'll be a little awkward, but I'm going to heal up and uh, just head on over to Blaine. I'm probably, I could do Sabrina as well if I really wanted to, but I might skip her just because the gym puzzle is really annoying and she's just really unfun and awkward. So I don't really need to be maximizing my gym runs to such an extent yet, especially since my team isn't optimal and especially since I'm not using Rich's Charms yet. I'll be using Rich's Charms once I'm doing more gyms per hour. All right, thankfully we dodged the Flash Fire Pokemon at Brock's gym. So once again, pretty easy leader. All right, next gym, I'm going to go ahead and hit up Misty. And once again, this will be one of the tougher ones for this route. So wish me luck. Let's see if we can meet the damage checkpoint. All right, Pelipper and Caracosta should be taken care of there, which is nice. I need to switch out my Seismitoad. I actually forgot about that, unfortunately. Taking out Pelipper there is actually really important. Pelipper can actually U-turn now on turn one, which is actually a really bad thing. Because obviously it kills your lead Pokemon, which is the point. That's fine. That doesn't matter. We don't see the Kindra, so this might be a really good sign. Um, but if the Pelipper U-turns out, he can actually come in later in the game and set up Drizzle, which will then obviously override your sun, which will make things a little awkward if you can't do enough damage or even really awkward sometimes, uh, if it's not late enough into the run. So that's a little scary. Thankfully he didn't U-turn, but be on the, be on the lookout for that now. Uh, that's actually something that's been changed in gym runs recently. All right, the good luck continues. We dodge the Kingdra, which is the scariest part of this gym. So it should be a pretty easy Misty. Love to see it. All right, Misty defeated on to the next one, which I think is going to be Erica for the time being. So we're going to go Celadon, Vermilion, and then Fuchsia, and then head over to Blaine with any time left. Still have 24 minutes left, making pretty good time. Usually, it should take you around three to four minutes per gym leader. Now, with this team, it's a little more awkward because it's pretty unoptimized. Um, I definitely just, I really, I mean, it's mostly fine. I just need better Typhlosions. I lost, I lost a lot of time to other gyms, uh, either not being able to complete them and everything. So it just happens when your team is uh, pretty budget, you know, you really want to have that plus special attack nature on the Typhlosions and mine just don't. One is gentle, one is quirky, which is pretty bad. Uh, these were meant to be sort of a, a beginner's gym rerun team. And I definitely want to fix these later on. We're at 235k at the moment. So loving the cash tag growing. It's such a satisfying thing to see. All right, I never expected Erica to be a damage threshold, but this is looking pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. The Dragonite only took 37.8 from that. It should take a lot more here because the multi-scale is broken. For those that don't know, uh, hidden abilities generally aren't really implemented. It actually might be like 1 HP. No, I killed it. Okay, whew. Most Pokemon don't have hidden abilities in Pokemon, but... That is not the case for gym leaders and AI and trainers. Trainers, they get to be busted. They get to be broken. They get access to those hidden abilities, even though us as players don't. And that's part of what makes Pokemon like AI and trainers so difficult. They get access to the more powerful stuff while we have to kind of piece together and use our, use our brains a little bit as opposed to just being able to push through things. I say we can't push through things as I'm literally just spamming eruption to clear gym rerun. So I don't know. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. All right, there we go. Erica defeated, and I have to remember to switch out my Seismitoad. Please don't let me forget here. I'm going to head over to uh, Lieutenant Surge now. You can actually do Lieutenant Surge last in Vermilion, uh, or in Kanto, to, in Kanto, because the reason being, you can actually finish him and then walk out of his doors and then surf over to the dock, and it'll save you a little bit of time uh, in transport. Let me switch out my Seismitoad. I almost forgot. Uh, you can save a little bit of time 
essentially by just surfing across the dock and i'll show you guys what that or at least like the location i'm not going to do it here because i have no region to go to after the reason you would do that is if you have a region to go to after kanto but i obviously don't so i'm not going to be doing that it's nice to see all the shinies there i have cut on one of my typhlosions cut is super important to be able to get through here obviously to do the gym run let's go ahead and head up here make sure i put an xp share on this but essentially you could have just surfed over that little path back to i'll try to show you guys on the way out but let me defeat, defeat lieutenant surge should be pretty easy all right so after defeating lieutenant surge this is essentially you would literally just surf and run right across to this dock it's super super close and you run over here and then you would go over to hoenn or whatever region you're heading to next now obviously i'm only finishing canto i still have 17 minutes on the coin but i only have two gyms left so after i do that i'm probably just gonna go, just not even worry about the rest of the coin i'm not super pressed about getting every little ounce of value out of it i could go do some rich trainers and i might go do two that i know of in unova that are at least super easy to get to but uh, I really want to start jumping into other money making methods after this. Doing your gym run daily is super important and I heavily encourage and recommend everyone do it. But as many of you might know, it does become pretty brainless, pretty mindless. It can be a little frustrating, yet, but it's nice to be able to just do one hour a day for most, for most accounts, not for this account, this is a 10 million challenge, but for most people to just be able to do one gym run a day and get essentially all of your money making out of the day, out of, you know, out of the way in, in one hour and then be able to just shiny hunt or do whatever you want to do, breed, play PVP, make comps, whatever you want to do for the rest rest of the day it's a really nice way to essentially um you know it sucks to do a gym run feels a little boring a little frustrating um but it's really nice to just be able to earn that pokey in and then focus on doing what you want to do all right, this gym was a little awkward since Koga's red cards can switch out your Pokemon and really jumble things up. Quillfish unfortunately lost his life in the line of duty, but that's okay. The gym was still pretty easily defeated, so moving on from there. Putting us up to around, what is that, 275k? Nice, nice. All right, here I am attempting Blaine. This should probably be the last gym leader that I do. I might go do the two rich trainers in Unova, and I'll show you guys that, but I'm curious to see how this will go. This might be impossible. We do see Bl Blaine lead with his Maltray, so a little scary there, but... Gotta not be scared of the legendaries in the gym reruns. I don't think Maltrace has flash fire. It actually might. If this has flash fire, it might just be, I might have to just log. It might just be impossible straight up from the get go, but maybe I'll get as much XP as I can on Quillfish or something. It's really important that we, we leveled almost all of our, uh, you know, our comps that we made. So we can actually just go ahead and list these and sell these after, but it might actually be worth to try to buy some new ones and do some EV training. Having enough, uh, essentially, I guess, um, mediocre comps to be able to level each time i do a gym run might be a good way to always fill that gap or worst time to worst i can buy something like a diano you can make some money by buying a diano off the gtl for really cheap 1200 pokian and then evolving it up into a high dragon and usually they sell for around 30k yeah 28k so huge huge profit there if you just level up a pokemon all right, now Houndoom ooh, and Arcanine. Let's see the, the Intimidate. Okay, so at least Arcanine is Intimidate, but Houndoom for sure has Flash Fire. I'm like pretty guaranteed of here. Now, I'm still just going to go ahead and Eruption in the face of him uh, and hopefully just be able to take him out with my Dragonite, but it's going to be a little tough. I'm really surprised at how little damage this Dragonite does. It's pretty shocking. At least we're still able to take out the Arcanine there. And he just returns a Heat Wave, doing pretty little damage. And even one of our Typhlosions dodged it, so pretty lucky there. Uh, Blissey in the back. Now, this is going to be scary. I don't think I'm going to be able to take this out. And he's going to help a hand. This is kind of scary. I'm not going to be able to take this thing out. I'm pretty... Honestly, 58% is way more than I thought. Maybe that's a crit? Maybe with a crit I can take it out? That is a lot more damage than I thought. Wow, I cannot believe I was actually able to kill the Blissey. Blissey is just such a bulky, especially defensive Pokemon. That's honestly pretty shocking ah of course of course it lives at one hp my mistake heat wave helping handed plus flash fire boost is going to do a lot of damage to me there we are going to be able to finish it off unless he he might heal here which will be really sad hopefully don't heal okay honestly a good thing oh but he's faster than me now that my uh my tailwind is gone oh this gym run might be a little stuffed Hopefully that takes out the Blissey. This is going to be tough. 6%. Hopefully that's enough damage. No. Oh, this is a nightmare situation. This is a nightmare. This is so unfortunate. Oh, man. I'm going to bring in Dragonite here and try to set up Rain, I guess. This is brutal. That is, like, nightmare scenario. I'm going to Eruption here. Um, This is tough. I just went ahead and threw up the surf because I really need to take out this Blissey. That helping hand is actually causing me some big issues, but I'm a little scared. I'm not 3.8%. That's all the damage I do to the Blissey. Very, very specially defensive tanky. Now this battle is probably lost. Unfortunately, we take the L on this one. 
Okay, maybe this is winnable in some strange... Nope, just kidding. In some strange world, the Blissey happened to go for the attack there, not the helping hand. So we do lose to Blaine. Pretty embarrassing. But let's just head over to Unova and do those rich trainers, and we'll call it a full gym run complete. So if you're curious, these are the two rich trainers I usually battle. They're north of Undela Town over here on Route 13, I believe. Yeah, Route 13 in Unova. There's two old people here you can battle, and I think they give you around 7 or 8k if you defeat them on an amulet coin. I think it's 9,500 9, on Rich's Charm. All right, there's that first one defeated. You just want to spam flamethrower to get through these guys. Let's see the Pokey in. Yeah, 8, eight days out. That will blah, 8k. <laughs> All right, after a mini stroke, the gym run is finally complete. A very scuffed gym run, a lot of weird battles, but honestly, could have been a lot worse overall, putting us at almost 300k Poke in. But you know what? I think it's time to actually go do some real money making method. Now, I have two Loot for One Hour videos that I've been meaning to make for a really long time. So I'm going to go ahead and I always like to include that in this sort of series, especially when I have such a huge like money goal in mind for this with 10 million Poke Yen. I'm going to go ahead and go catch one hour of Combi. So if you want to see that video, that'll actually be a separate video. But essentially, I'm going to go do that, make some Poke Yen for this account, and then I'll show you guys the aftermath and how much profit we actually made. So you guys are just going to be able to see the actual outcome and the actual profit. So it might be a kind of fun way to see both different sides of the coin. But I will go ahead and at least show you guys how I do it and where I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using a cute charm, Minchino, uh, to be specifically searching for female combi. That'll be a big part of it. And I'm going to be heading over here left of or west of Lucanosa Town and heading up to this location with this dark grass. It's an uncommon encounter rate for combi here. I'm going to be trying to find all the female combi because if you don't know, uh, female combi evolves into Vespa Queen, but male combi actually do not. But both still have a really decent base price, so I'm going to be catching all combi I see. So I'll see you guys in a quick sec. All right, you guys got to dodge all the hard work if you didn't watch the loot from one hour of combi actual video on this series, but I went ahead and completed all that. We made around 90k profit, which is awesome, and that's after all the listing fees, after all the pokeballs and everything. 90k profit, not the best money maker, especially for like one hour, but at the same time, uh, it's really fun, and it's a really good shiny hunting spot. That's actually a spot that I really care about because I would love to one day get a shiny combi or a shiny sunkern. There's also shiny uh, Heracross and shiny pincer there, which are a lot rarer, but they could be gotten there pretty easily i've actually had a friend uh in a team in my team who got a shiny pincer there which was pretty pretty incredible so really happy to have gotten that done uh those are all listing on the gtl right now obviously nothing sold we don't have the actual pokey in yet but we have a lot of expected profit on the way it's nice seeing the gtl really filled up on this account speaking of filling up the gtl i actually still need to go ahead and go sell those semi comp pokemon that we finished leveling uh we still have quillfish to finish but only three levels needed on that Let's go ahead and get some price checks on this muck in this seismo toad. I'm guessing around 50 to 60k, maybe 50 to 100k max. They shouldn't sell for a ton. Mediocre comps usually don't, but it's just super fun and easy free money. Now, I'm not going to lie, this Seismitoad is a lot better than I remember. I didn't realize he was actually 25 plus in every stat. That's pretty freaking solid. Naughty's not the best nature, but it's definitely not bad by any means. He gets hit, what, most, the most special attacks that are going to hit him are going to be grass type moves like Giga Drain, and they're going to one shot him anyway, so not super worried about that. The cheapest comparable one on the GTL is 26k. Now, obviously, this is wickedly overpriced. I do not see myself listing mine for anything close to that, but we'll go ahead and come to a sort of logical guesstimate. I think for now, especially since it's not moveset or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it up for 80k. Really good IVs. Uh, if someone wants a beginner competitive size method, it's also a pretty niche Pokemon. It's really easy to just pick that thing up for 80k and just go to town with it and just have some fun testing it out. Now, let's go ahead and find a price for this muck. Now, the Muck is a lot worse stat-wise and should be worth a lot less. You see one here for 20k, but obviously it's not EV trained and not ready to be played in competitive play. Uh, this Muck is 30k. Really, really cheap ones. Really good examples, honestly. I think this is going to be a 50k comp. One of the cheaper ones. This one's 70k. Ooh, this is actually, this is a tough competitor because why would anyone buy mine for 50k when they could buy this one for 70k? I might have to list, list this much for like 40k or something. That might end up being, yeah, I think 40k is at that point 40 or 50 this is tough i think 40k is at that point where it's too close it's too tough to like not buy it if someone wants that uh and at the same time uh it's just really still a really good profit for me even though it's the time lost but i really love making mediocre comps and i was surprised at how fast you could ev train like i was able to ev train each stat in 15 minutes which was super nice all right, now I think it's going to go ahead and bring this episode to a close. I did end up, oh, what's up, Soink? 
Uh, I did end up spending a little too much time recording gym run stuff on that than I kind of wanted to and expected. Don't worry, I won't be doing that. This will sort of be the, the gym run episode showing you guys my route. That might change, might improve over the course of the series, but I won't be doing it to that detail from now on. I'll essentially just be saying, hey guys, I'm going to go do my gym run and then I'll come back with like 200k more Pokeons. So it'll be a lot more enjoyable for you guys to get through and watch that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode still. There was a lot of progress made in terms of Poke and I made a lot of Poke and I listed a lot of things. We have a lot of potential sales incoming and it's always fun to check back on episodes and see like, hey, what's sold? How much did I make? Et cetera, et cetera. So if you guys like this video, make sure to like it physically. Dislike if you didn't, that's totally okay as well. Subscribe to the channel for daily uploads and Pokemon content, whether it's this series, PVP, money making guides, etc. etc. Check that stuff out. The Discord link is down below to join a community and see whenever videos are posted as soon as possible. And then finally, if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel, it really does help out a lot and allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. Great ways to do that are via YouTube memberships, Twitch Prime, Twitch Sub, or hit up my PayPal or Venmo. PayPal and Venmo are really the best ways to support because they shave off less on the top. They take less from money from you guys and give more to me, so it's a mutually beneficial thing. I really appreciate you guys' time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Hopefully, you guys can make some dope Pokemon Pokemon today and just have a great time playing Pokemon. See you later. Hey, if you're seeing this clip, that means you watched the entire video and thank you. From the bottom of my heart, that means a lot. And this clip is used to say thank you so much to any of those who go above and beyond, any YouTube members, Twitch primers, Twitch subs, Patreon, whatever you may do to support the channel. It's appreciated and your name is here. Thank you all so much and have a great day.